Okay, orbital motion. So here I have, this is the Earth looking at it from the North Pole. I drew this myself, and here is a ginormous object orbiting it. But let's say it starts right here on the surface of the Earth, and you want to launch it into space. Um, how much energy does that take? So we're going to look at the energy it requires to get something into orbit. Okay, so let's start here with position one and position two. Uh, so at one, it's on the Earth, and in two, it's in orbit. So we have here, let's call this, let's call this a height h, the altitude above, above the Earth. Okay, so one on Earth, so r equals the radius of the Earth, v equals either zero or something. Okay, so you can actually start, uh, if, you, if you're on the equator, you're actually moving, right? So I'll do this both ways. So this is vr1 and v1. Now for position two, we have the spacecraft up here, orbit. This is actually, let's call this low, this is called orbit. I was going to say low Earth orbit, but it could be anything. So R2 is going to be Re plus H. So it's higher up. So definitely needs more gravitational potential energy. But it also has a velocity. And we need to know what the velocity of that is. Okay, because it has to be moving in order to stay in orbit. And yes, I will put down below a video about the velocity to move in a circular orbit. I already did that one. So you should go watch that down there. Go. Go down there. Okay. So let's calculate the velocity it needs to move in orbit. So here I have a spacecraft, and this is the center of the Earth, and this is the radius r, and the velocity v, and it's accelerating that way. It's accelerating because it's moving in a circle, so the centripetal acceleration is going to be v squared over r. I'm just using r in general for right now. There's also a gravitational force on it. I guess I should put videos for centripetal acceleration, that's another arrow, and the gravitational force down below. So there's a gravitational force, F, the magnet is pointing towards the center of the, uh, the Earth, and F is going to be G, mass of the object, mass of the Earth, over R squared. So if I put these two things together, this force would have to be equal to M, AC, which is V squared over R. Now, I just want to solve for V, and I did this whole thing before, so that's why I'm going over it kind of quickly. The mass cancels, and I get V, the one of these R's cancel, equals the square root of G M E over R. That's the velocity of 2 in orbit. And then, really, I should write this as the square root of G M E over R the radius of the Earth plus h, because then I have it in my other terms. So now I know the velocity. So I know the velocity. Uh, I know everything I can start doing my work energy problem. So, of course, the first thing to do, work energy. Why do we use the work energy? I, I like to ask you this because it's important to think about why we do it a particular way. Uh, well, one, we're looking for energy, so that's a pretty good hint there. But two, I don't really care when this gets in orbit. I just want it to be in orbit, so I have position one and position two. When you have two positions and that's all we care about, then you should use work energy. And then I should do this. Well, what's my system? It's going to be the object plus the Earth. So it's the object plus the Earth because then I have this gravitational interaction between the two would be a potential energy. So that means I'm going to have kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, and then gravitational potential energy, negative g, mass of the object, mass of the Earth, over r. Okay, so let's do this. So there's no work done on the system. So that means that I have the following. Work, change in kinetic, plus change in potential. There's no work done. So it's going to be K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1. And remember what I'm trying to solve for is, um, what am I trying to solve for? I guess I'm trying to solve for, um, 
how much energy. Yeah, the work is, is ah, that's what it is. There is something else in the system. The rocket. Or fuel source, whatever. So that is going to do work on the system. So the, there's going to be work on the system, and that's what we're trying to find. Sorry, my fault. So this is not going to be equal to zero. Okay. So I have work. K2 is going to be one half M V2. But remember, I put V2 was uh, V2 squared. So this is going to be G mass of the Earth over radius of the Earth plus H. That was my velocity to make it in orbit. It was that, the square root of that, but I squared it. Minus one half M V1 squared. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, so if we want to put that equal to zero, we can. It doesn't really matter. We're going to have to do this in another way. So, um, and I'll, I'll get an expression for V1, depending on where you are on the Earth, because that will be fun. Okay, then I have plus U2, which is going to be negative G M mass of the Earth, radius of the Earth, plus H, minus a negative, so it's going to be plus G M M E over R E. And that's it, because I know all these values, right? I know uh, V1 could be zero. I know the mass of the Earth. I know the altitude. I could say H equals 400 kilometers. We, that's the one we used before. I could say the mass of the object, let's say it's a 100 kilogram satellite. Um, that's V1 equals zero, but it could be something else. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the range of velocities, and then I'll I'll put this in a calculator so that we can we can do it fully. So here's the Earth, and here's the equator, and here's me in Louisiana. So this angle is thirty degrees for me. So that means that I am moving in a circle of radius. Um, this, R, R, C, let's call it. And I know that, let's say the angular velocity of the Earth, uh, omega E, it's, you know, I don't know, it rotates once a day, but I'm going to get a value for this. I don't want to get, it's, I want to get it in radians per second, and I don't know that off the top of my head, but there is a value. Once I know that, then I can say V equals uh, R omega, so R, I'm sorry, that's it. So I just need to multiply by V. Now, this is the radius of the Earth. So RC is going to be, that's RC. It's going to be the radius of the Earth times this length, which is cosine theta times omega Earth. So if I'm down here on the equator, then I'm going to have a greater radius and a greater velocity um, because of the rotation of the Earth. If I'm up here at the North Pole, then I'm going to be really cold and not moving. Okay, so the closer to the equator you are, the better. Oh, and this assumes that you're launching in the same direction that the Earth is rotating. If you launch in the opposite direction, then you're just making things harder on yourself. Okay. Okay, so now I could put this as my V1, and then I can get all the possible combinations of how much energy it takes to get into orbit. But no point in putting all these numbers in multiple times. It's better just to make one calculation and do it as a calculation. And I'll put that next. Okay, I got a little head start here. I just entered in the, the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth. This is the orbital altitude in meters. Uh, this is the angular velocity of the Earth in radians per second. I looked it up. Uh, this is your latitude. I think I spelled that wrong. Uh, and I put 30 degrees, so I convert that to radians. So now the first thing I'm going to do is calculate V1 is going to be equal to uh, radius of the Earth times cosine theta times omega E. Next, I need R1. That's just going to be radius of the Earth. Uh, oh, I need M, the mass of the object. Let's say uh, that says 100 grams. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Okay, so now I need um, 
I think I got everything else. So now I'm just going to type in my equation here. So let's say work equals 0.5 times m times uh, g times mass of the earth divided by radius of the earth plus h, another parentheses, watch your parentheses here, minus 0.5 times m times v1 squared minus g times m times me divided by re plus h plus g times m times me divided by re. Print energy equals w joules. And I made an error. M is not defined. Oh, I said M1. Oh, okay. There. So, um, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, let's just do this. Okay. Let's change theta to zero. So, from the orbit. from So, that's three times three times, 3.3 .3 times 10 to the ninth. And if I, so I, I don't really, I gain like what, 10%. I gain, uh, I get a 10% bonus by launching from the equator, which that's a pretty big deal, okay? Um, but not a huge deal. So let's put this back to the, zero, theta is zero. Okay, theta, I want to do theta is 90, right? So let's put do uh, 90. And some, oh, that, that's it. That's it. That, so that's more energy, right? Three point three one times ten to the ninth takes more energy to uh, from the from the the North Pole. Uh, so let's try this. What if I increase the radius of the Earth or the starting location by, let's say, five ten kilometers? So ten e three. Let's see what happens. So it's 3.31 times to the ninth. I, I didn't really gain that much. So even so, the question is, should, would it be better to launch from a mountain or from the equator? And the answer is the mountain. Okay, because there's something in here you're not thinking about that we're not considering, and that's all that energy that you need to get through the atmosphere in order to get into orbit too. So you have to that you're gonna lose a lot of energy that way. If you start in a mountain, you have a better chance of that. Okay, let's do this. How about one more thing? dk equals the change in kinetic energy is going to be equal to uh, this stuff. And the change in gravitational potential energy is equal to this stuff. Print it. And joules. Let's run that. And something happened. DK. DK. I make mistakes on purpose just so you see what it looks like. So you see here the change in kinetic energy is m m way more. Way m 100 times more. I mean 10 times more than the change in gravitational potential energy. So this is what people say. Getting into orbit is not about the altitude, it's about the speed. It's about the energy needed to get up to speed to go into orbit. So that's that. Okay, I will share this code and the three things that I said, I'll put those down below and I'm, there's a very good chance that I may forget in between now and then. And if I do, it's your job to tell me and I'll add them. So put the comments down below. If you have questions, put those comments down below. If you haven't subscribed, that's what you need to do. I need to get some more subscribers and you are probably already subscribed, so make sure your friends do it too. Okay, I will see you guys some other time.